offers us a lot of tools at our fingertips as a presenter. Utilizing tools such as sharing your screen, the whiteboard, and breakout rooms can enhance your presentations. Today, Marvin Wiley Jr. will be sharing Zoom tips for presenters in his presentation, Advanced Skills for Presenters on Zoom. Please help me welcome Marvin. Yes, yeah, so Advanced Skills for Presenters on Zoom. As stated before, this is, these are the core topics that we're going to be discussing for today. And there's a lot of them, so we have to go a little bit quickly through them to, to be able to cover everything, but we'll get, we'll get there. But, but here's a little bonus thing. This is really quick. It's something where you can, it's similar to what John talked about as far as over where you see the stop video. Over at the stop video, you can click on video settings and you'll be able to, you'll be able to click on keyboard shortcuts. And then from there, you can set all these various different shortcuts to make it easier for yourself as a presenter, as you're presenting. And one of them is to mute everybody except for the host, which can be very, very useful because you can just press something on your keyboard and then it does that all or for you. So that's something to keep in mind that you can go there and, and there's a lot of these, oops, it, there is a lot of these particular settings to, to scroll through. Let's talk a little bit about this whiteboard right here. One use is to do similar, to do something similar to what you see here is like a, is like a Venn diagram. You can put text actually within those various different circles. So it'll be one use for the whiteboard. And largely I would see that if you're gonna show or need graphics or images that you're trying to, to show like, like using shapes, then using something like a whiteboard or another website where people can collaborate on will be useful. If you're just doing bullet points or something like that, then where it's all text, then it might be better off using something like Google Docs in that way because you can't easily use bullet points on the whiteboard if you're trying to list things. That's something to keep in mind there. But how do you bring up the whiteboard? So it's similar, it's the same process as far as when you go through sharing your screen, you'll click on the green share button. that will be on the bottom. It'll take you to this screen right here where you'll see the whiteboard and then you'll click on share screen. That'll bring up all of the options for, for, the, for the whiteboard. So you see that there is text, there's draw, stamp, spotlight, erase, eraser, format, undo, redo, clear and save. So these are all, all the various different options that you can utilize as the whiteboard. And so this is something that, can, that you can play around with. And one interesting thing is that there is a spotlight and you should be able to see it right now. There's like a little round thing, which is pretty useful. You can actually use you, you, you can actually utilize this outside of using the whiteboard as well as all of these tools you see at the top here as far as text all the way on through, you can actually use those on any web page, which is pretty cool. So you can put shapes, you can put text on any web page as you're sharing your screen. So that can be useful if you're trying to point something out. But those would be all of the tools that you would have utilizing the whiteboard. And this kind of goes through some of those particular tools. You can change the color of the text, the color of the of any shapes that you're that you're putting on the whiteboard. You can you can adjust the size of, the, of your text. You can make it bold. And all this cool stuff. You can, save, you can save the whiteboard and you'll be able to download it as an image or a PDF file by clicking on save. When you erase anything on the whiteboard though, what ends up happening is it'll erase the whole thing. So for example, if you have a square that you have on the whiteboard, the eraser isn't gonna erase just a small fraction of that square, it's gonna erase the whole entire square in that way. So it, so it erases each, each and every element off of, like as you're erasing stuff. Yep, and if you exit out of those particular controls when you're using the whiteboard, you can just click on whiteboard and it'll bring up those controls back up. And then you'll see the annotate button. So if you're not, if you're just sharing any screen, it'll have that button, it'll say annotate instead of whiteboard. And then you'll be able to pull up those same controls. So that's kind of how that all of those work. When it comes to sharing a sound file, 
you would do that by also clicking on share your screen. So you'll click on on share, you'll, you'll click on share my screen. And then there'll be the option to click on advanced. And you'll click on music or computer sound only and then click on share in the bottom corner. And, and then what this will do is whatever audio that you have playing on your computer, you'll be able to share that. It's not going to share anything visually on your screen. It's only going to share the audio portion. If you needed it to share a specific audio piece or any file, really, for that matter, what you could do is click on the chat icon on the bottom of the screen. That will bring up the, ch the chat box. And then on the right, there'll be the file, the file button where you can click on the file button and then you'll be able to search through and find the file that you would like to share and then you'll be able to put that in the chat in the chat box but that feature it has to be turned on and so you have to turn it on it's in the in meeting basic the in meeting basic settings file transfer that has to be turned on otherwise you won't be able to upload any files in the chat Now, when it comes to sharing and unsharing a lot, one thing to one thing that's very, very helpful is what at least to minimize the craziness really is to is to reduce the amount of windows that you have on your screen. Because I know for me personally, I, sometimes I have like like dozens of windows on my screen, and then when I go on a Zoom call and I'm trying to share my screen, I have to sort through and try to find the screen I'm trying to share. So that can really slow you down. So, so minimizing that really, really helps. And, or, or closing out any windows that you're not using at the moment. You can also share multiple windows at once. It's something new that I, just, that I just realized. You can hold down the control key and then click on any window that you'd like to share and then you'll be able to share it. And that's something I might explore a little bit more. I, I just found that out like yesterday. And I, I would assume on a Mac, I think it might be control or not the control, but the command key that you might click on. And then another, another thing to keep in mind is to, when you're sharing a file, it can be best to, to queue it up. That way, when you go to the file that you're sharing, it's ready to go and you're not searching for the file. And then when you're done speaking on that particular file that you're sharing, you can stop the share and then that will just, that will initiate a smooth transition between you speaking on camera and sharing what you're sharing on screen. Sharing your screen with sound, and this is not the most intuitive thing, at least it wasn't for me. So once you click the share button, on the bottom left-hand corner, there's a button that is a little checkbox that says share sound. And if you check that, then whatever audio is being played on your computer is going to be heard by, by your audience. And this is important because if that's not checked and say you're playing a video, the audio that, that the audience is going to hear is the audio that's playing from the video that you're hearing is going to be feeding back into your microphone which isn't gonna sound very good for your audience. It's gonna sound very, very muffled. So you want to get it as close as possible to the exact audio that, that you're able to hear so that your audience can hear that as well. So it sounds as good as possible. So that's the whole purpose of sharing your sound audio. If you don't click that, you don't necessarily have to stop the share and go back to the process of sharing. You could go up to the top where it says more and scroll down towards the bottom and there's a, there's an option for share sound. When that's checked next, when, when there's a check, when there's a check mark next to shared sound, then that means that your sound is being shared. Now, breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are are super fun, and some of the key things to to keep in mind when when roaming through breakout rooms is you want to be mindful of where the breakout room button is, what that looks like, which is on the screen right now. And also leaving the breakout room because you'll have an option to leave the breakout room. You also have the option to leave the entire meeting. So sometimes it can be very easy to leave the entire meeting by accident. So it's important to keep that in mind. Sometimes the breakout rooms are set up where, where you'll be automatically sent into the breakout room. 
If not, then there'll be a pop-up similar to this where there'll be an option to join the breakout room. So you'll click that and then, and, and, and then it'll say the room that you're being sent to, and then you'll be able to join that breakout room. Now the breakout room button location is kind of different per device. And this is typically on a desktop or a laptop, it's on the bottom, but sometimes it's, it's hidden until you scroll your cursor, you know, the little arrow thing, you scroll it down towards the bottom of your screen, then the whole menu bar at the bottom where you see participants, chat, share screen, all that will, will pop up on the bottom and you'll see breakout rooms. But you'll only see that typically if the breakout rooms have already been launched. Unless you're the host of the meeting and you're and you have the controls to be able to, to to run breakout rooms and you'll see that button. And you'll see the leave button or the leave room button that would be in the bottom right hand corner. On a smartphone device, it's in the upper left hand corner. With that, you'll have to tap the screen typically, and then you'll be and then it'll pop up because it won't necessarily be there. Just it's similar to the, uh, on the desktop or laptop, you have to move the cursor down because typically those those controls don't just stick on the screen the whole time. You just have to tap the screen and then and then you'll be able to see it and then you'll be able to hit the bre the breakout room button. And and then of course you'll have the options of leaving the meeting or leaving the breakout room. So you want to make sure you click on leave the breakout room. And with a with a Zoom 5.4 or newer, you actually be able to move move into breakout rooms all by yourself. Typically it was with the host. The host had to move you into breakout rooms. But now if you have the newer version of Zoom, at least 5.4, you'll be able to click the breakout room button. You'll see the full list. You, all, you also see, well, uh, uh, other than on a smartphone device, on the laptop or desktop, you can see everybody that's in those breakout rooms and you build to join them at any time that you would like to, which is pretty awesome. That's a pretty cool update with Zoom. And so those and, and so those be some key advanced things, advanced tips for using Zoom. Game over.